Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. So this video is going to be a little bit different to my normal ones and the chances are you probably haven't seen me before all my videos. So just as a five second introduction, the main theme of my channel at the moment is stealth car camping. Now if what I'll do at the end of this video I'll put links to my playlist just so if you're interested you can see what I camp in and where I camp. I decided to make this video because I wanted to show you all how I make my YouTube videos. So that includes the equipment I use, the cameras I use, how I plan the videos, how I edit the videos, how I upload the videos, and basically just the whole process of creating a YouTube video. Now there's clearly a lot of content within all of those areas. So what I'll be doing is a kind of like an overview, so giving you the very basic but essential information for all of those areas. Now I suppose the idea for doing this is in terms of my car camping channel itself what one of my main aims around doing these was yes I find it fun but also I like the idea of inspiring people to go out and do car camping too. So I suppose in terms of making this video around making videos it's there to inspire those of you who are maybe thinking about doing YouTube videos to get out there and do it. Undoubtedly the most important piece of equipment you will need when making videos is your camera equipment. So when I first started filming I was using my iPhone 6 and to be honest that was fine. In addition to that I had a secondary camera which was an old fake GoPro that I've had for years and between the two of those that worked out perfectly. Now as I've continued making these videos and as I've continued watching YouTube videos I decided to upgrade the equipment that I have. Now what I've gone for, so I've done a lot of research and the cam camera I'm currently using here is the Sony ZV-1. Now that's a considerable upgrade from what I was using but to be honest I kind of thought to myself that if I'm going to make content I might as well have content that looked good to the viewer and the, certainly the quality of the picture you get from the ZV-1 is pretty good. It does come with a hefty price tag, I think it's about £600, um, but to be honest that's still quite cheap when you look at some of the cameras that other YouTubers creators use where you'll be looking at a few thousand dollars or pounds for those, so £600 for this isn't too bad. Now settings wise I pretty much use the settings this camera came with. I don't think I've actually changed anything on it and for me it works perfectly. I have two main uses for this camera. The first is like this which I think is called a talking heads video. So like when I'm sitting in the back of the car and the other use I have for it is when I'm out walking and I'm out vlogging. So like this one here. And for both these purposes it seems to work very well. Well you would hope it would work well, it's designed for that purpose. Now the good thing about this camera is it has a flip out screen so you can see quite well what you're filming and uh, you can see what the screen layout is. I'm not going to go into too much about the camera itself because there are loads of videos on YouTube about this camera where you can learn all, the, all its features and everything else but for someone who owns it for the purpose of vlogging I do recommend it. I do recommend though you buy more batteries. What I found is the one that comes with it, the first time I ever used it, it lasted about an hour or so, uh, an hour's worth of content should I say. So I do recommend buying a couple of spare batteries just to keep you going. In terms of using the camera for taking landscape shots, it seems okay, but the image stability doesn't seem as good as when you're using it for vlogging. Now. In addition to the camera itself giving you the visual quality, what I wanted also for my videos was to have good sound quality, especially because on the iPhone the thing that really let it down for me was the audio. Um, sometimes the audio on the iPhone wouldn't always kick in at first, it would only start to work after a few words and that was annoying because you wouldn't know that happened until you edit it. So for my iPhone I'd bought a lapel mic, uh, this one here. This was just a cheap one I think from Amazon Voji Pi and that was only about £12 or so. Originally when I started using the ZV-1 I was using it with the built-in microphone because it is a multi-directional mic and it was okay but to be honest it still didn't give me the quality that I wanted so I'm now using the lapel mic with the ZV-1. It's, it's a wired mic, it's not Bluetooth but it's a cheap mic 
and it, I think it works really well and the sound quality for me is absolutely perfect. So yeah, that's my main setup, the Sony ZV-1 and a cheap little lapel mic. Now, as far as my secondary camera is concerned, the thing with my channel, what I do, I car camp and run. So when I go running, I now use a, can you see that? I've got a, a GoPro 10. So likewise, I upgraded from my action cam to a much better version. And the GoPro 10 really is awesome. The image stability is, well, you can see for yourself now, the image stability is so good. And the quality of the picture, in fact, to be honest, you could probably use the GoPro 10 as a vlogging camera in itself. Although I would recommend that you buy the media mod. It's what I'm gonna buy for it next. I'm gonna buy the media mod, not actually for that microphone, but because the media mod then has a 3.5 mil jack, so I could use the lapel mic on that too if I wanted to. So yeah, GoPro 10, awesome for the running around and doing stuff. Just need to sort out the mic and um, the ZV-1 for the main vlogging. And between the two of them, they both work really well. Now, in addition to the running shots, I will use the GoPro 10 for the in-car shots. So this will be when I want a wider view. Now the GoPro 10, I use it just on wide view mode. So what you're seeing now is just simple wide view. It does have extra wide view and you can also switch it so it's just normal without the fisheye effect. But it works well because it gives you, if you're filming in a tight space, it will make it look a lot larger because of the fisheye effect. So these are, they're the main things I use the GoPro for, for the running um, and for the in-car shots. I do sometimes still use my iPhone. I've got an iPhone SE second generation now, but I will only use my iPhone with a specific piece of equipment that I've got. But I'll talk about that in a minute. Now, a very important accessory to use with your vlogging camera, your GoPro and your iPhone is your tripod and your selfie sticks. Now, for me, I have three main items that I use. I have my main tripod, which is the one you've got now. Um, this is only a cheap one from Amazon. It's a fixed size tripod, but it does fold down. So I use it for two purposes. I use it for filming like this. So if I wanna film myself in the car, when I'm setting up, I can fix the camera up and it will look down on me. That's fine. It's because it's adjustable height, you can use it for other things like filming, putting stuff in and out the car. But what this particular tripod is also good for is when you're vlogging outside with the ZV-1. Because with the ZV-1, if you have the image stability on, it will crop the screen down. Now, what you can do with the tripod is hold it further away from your face. So you still get the vlogging quality, but you just get a little bit wider view. And because this tripod is so light and it's extendable and it's got a bendable head, you can put, it's just like a big selfie stick. So it works really well for both those purposes. The other piece of equipment I use, which is mainly for the GoPro end, is these, or are these ones. Now, these ones are great for running because A, they're light, so I can use it to hold the GoPro up like this. I can also use it as a tripod on the floor to put the GoPro on as I run past it. And I can even use it to wrap around things. That's why these little, I don't know what they're actually called, but you can use them to wrap onto objects so you can film like a tree, for example. So it's a very useful piece of equipment to have. And actually this came as part of a set with this much longer selfie stick. Again, I used this for the GoPro. And with this one, as you can see, it is fairly massive. It's super light as well. So I can use this, in fact, I do use, this is my main, this one is my main GoPro camera because you get such a wide angle. It's perfect for running because you get the angles of, you can get really quite far away. So it gives the illusion maybe that it's somebody else filming you rather than yourself. But they work really well and this was only cheap. I think this was only something like 20 quid for these things and there's some other bits that came with it too. So they are my main camera accessories. Another super important accessory which I use in all my videos are the car mounts for both the GoPro and the ZV-1. So they're only the, your basic suction mount ones. So because of my car, 
I have to use the ones that stick to the windscreen. So I'll have one here, which is where the GoPro sits to film the road, and I have one on this side, which is where the ZV1, ZV1 sits and it films me. So these are really cool. They're relatively cheap, only like 10, 12 pound, and they do a job. But what my favorite mount is for the GoPro is actually this one. Again, all this stuff comes from Amazon, and because I've always got an Amazon list up, I'll put them in the, in, the, in the description, but that's all my links to everything I use, not just this stuff. But yeah, it's, this mount is my favorite, which is a magnetic mount. Now with this, you can get these type of shots. And I think with these kind of shots, they're a little bit unique in terms of the videos that I've seen on YouTube. And it does provide some really cool angles. It's very secure and actually this is very hard to get off. So there's no risk of your camera falling off. But actually the quality of the pictures you see here aren't even the GoPro. That's the old action cam. Um, I haven't used the GoPro in this yet, but as you can tell by these videos, the GoPro of this is gonna be really cool. So I mentioned earlier, I still use my iPhone for one type of filming. And that is when I use my DJI Mobile 5 or DJI MO5. So what the DJI MO5 is, it's a three axis gimbal. Now, I originally bought this for running basically, but as I've now got the GoPro 10, this is slightly redundant in the filming that I do. However, I still can use it because it does have certain features that the GoPro and the ZV-1 can't do. Now, I've used this feature in a couple of videos, and as you can see here, what you've got is basically a moving time-lapse, um, which is a really nice feature and actually perfect when you're doing filming like this, of say the sky and the sun or sunsets, this would be awesome for. It also has the spin feature, which is this, and I think in the, the day it can be it's very good if you want a very smooth shot say like this it's a good bit of kit to have it comes with its own tripod that um, screws into the base and basically it means that you can use this to set it up you can set it up and then you can use it however so as a set time lapse as a moving shot and the difference with the MO for the mobile DJI MO5 over the previous incarnations is that it does have this a little selfie stick edition it might not look like the biggest selfie stick in comparison to say that last one i had but actually it is still cool and i had used it in videos like this for those kind of close to the earth shots and walking shots and running shots so it's if you don't want if you want the kind of action shots that a gopro can give you but you don't want a GoPro, then a piece of equipment like this is very useful for that and all the other features. And there's lots more features for this I haven't spoken about, but certainly it still comes with me when I go out and do my videos just because it's a good thing to have. Now, the final thing, the very final thing that I use for filming content, and it's probably the thing I use the absolute least in reality, this. A little DJI Spark drone. Now certainly in terms of the types of videos that I film, drones are used quite regularly in them for those amazing landscapes and shots. In terms of using the drone I don't have a lot of confidence yet with using it and actually to be honest quite a lot of the locations that I go to it's either too windy or too public and I can't use it anyway. But on the rare occasions I have been able to use it, it really does add something special to your video. It gives you those landscape views and that bird's eye view and it is cool. Now the Spark of all the DJI family, this is a discontinued model and I bought this secondhand from CEX. Um, so it wasn't too bad price wise and actually as far as drones go, I have had drones before, I've never had a, what I would call a decent one and the Spark is certainly what I would call a decent one. Um, so yeah, that's it. That is all my camera gear and all my filming gear and everything I use associated with that. So that's all the filming gear and the accessories. The next, the most important thing is of course, how you edit 
all the videos you've shot. Now at the moment I'm still using the fairly basic iMovie on my iPhone and to be honest for me iMovie actually does everything that I need it to do. I know there's lots of features it doesn't have like the ability to zoom in on your shots and lots of other features but to be honest I say it does work fine for me. I'm able to cut my scenes or cut my files in the middle separate them to cut the scenes i'm able to transition the scenes and i'm able to add music and to be honest that's all that i really need at the moment for the videos that i make now the only problem that i'm having with imovie at the minute is linked to the fact that i've upgraded my well, both cameras now the downside of upgrading both cameras is that the size of the video files that you create are now so much larger and unfortunately my iPhone is only 64 gigabytes which in reality if you have an iPhone you'll know you lose half of that in the operating system so the problem I had on the video I literally just made a couple of days ago was that I didn't have enough memory left on my phone to export the file once I edited it and I discovered the problem with an iMovie file is that I wasn't actually able to export it anywhere it was stuck on my phone so ultimately what I had to do was create or well, basically remake the whole vlog again but on my son's iPad which also has iMovie now it wasn't quite as simple as that in the end but um, I won't bore you with the headache I had but that does lead to another super important fact whenever you're making videos or when you start to make videos is make sure you back up your files first somewhere before you start editing so if you've got multiple devices put them into one place if you're looking at the ZV-1 and you're wondering how to get the files off now you can connect it via Bluetooth to your phone but the files download so slowly that way it's unbelievable so that the best way of downloading your files is via a USB cable to a laptop I found also the advantage of saving everything to your laptop means that you can actually preview the files and then delete them straight off if you've done if you have a dud scene so whenever I'm making videos so what you're watching now I might have filmed this or attempted to film this scene three times already but because I say something wrong I stop recording and start again now when I edit the SD card when I finish doing this I can then delete off all the attempts that went wrong and only leave the one that worked you can either do that on the camera or you can do that on a laptop and just delete the file in terms of planning the videos I make the first few I made I didn't I just went out and I filmed on the hoof so to speak so I just shot whatever I said whatever and that worked fine now what I've started doing probably for the past three months is I do almost script out how my videos are going to work obviously I can't do it precisely because stuff may happen within a car cam that I can't plan and that becomes the content but certainly I find for my videos it's good to have an idea of what I'm planning to film and also to have some kind of script around what I will say so for example this video here that you're seeing most of this I scripted this morning to give me an idea what I wanted to say uh, but then there is obviously the ability within that to talk freely to say what you want to say and just go again off the hoof so to speak but in terms of my vlogs they are partially scripted and they are partially planned and I think to be honest that works well because it almost makes it flow better so there's structure to it you know what's going to you're planning A, B, C and D, you have a start, you have a middle, you have an end and I think th the videos benefit from that type of planning because it, it, they just feel better I think personally and the thing is as well even though you might script it and plan it ultimately I don't always use everything that I film within a video so for example the one that I've just published the raw material or the raw data was over 60 minutes of content and by the time I'd edited that down and cut out the scenes I didn't want to use that ended up as a 25 minute video so there's a good 40 minutes that gets left so even though I plan it I script it I know what I'm going to do I still may cut over half of that content anyway but at least you could say I know I'm not going to have a problem filling the time the final thing that you do once your video is all edited it's all ready you've got your sound in is you just hit 
export or save so what this will do on the iphone or ipad or iMac I suppose it will save your iMovie project file and convert it into a movie file now all you then do with that is you can then use that and upload it wherever you can upload it to Facebook to Instagram to TikTok or to YouTube now in terms of YouTube the only other bit left to I suppose explain is that when you add videos to YouTube you will then invariably end up downloading the YouTube studio app now the YouTube studio app gives you a little bit more functionality but actually to be honest you're better off using the YouTube studio website because there are certain functions on there you can't do on the app and they're actually very important functions so what you can do on the YouTube studio website is you can add those end screens to your videos that's when you put links to playlists to or to your playlists and your subscribe button and it enables you to put in links throughout your video to other videos or other things um, i don't use the links in videos an awful lot i've used them once but i do use the playlists and the subscribe button so they are useful things to have an important thing when you're uploading to youtube is learning all this not not the secrets but learning how to work youtube so to speak now there's loads and loads of videos on youtube that explain this so i'm not going to go into massive amount of detail but i suppose the kind of things that i've been learning from watching those videos around how to develop your own youtube channel they are quite obvious things but when you first start uploading you don't really think about it it's only after a while you do but things like thumbnails titles description keywords these are probably the four most important things to think about in addition to your video and the content itself because the thumbnail has to stand out people have to want to look at it the keywords are important because that's how people will find your content um, in, and the YouTube app will show you the keywords that people use that confirms people do look for keywords the title itself is the whole clickbait argument isn't it is how do you what do you say in your title in addition to the picture to grab people so the picture and the title may essentially do different things the picture catches someone's attention the words pulls them in but also one of the things that youtube had on their own little content creator videos was around another important aspect is the first two lines of the written description because that's the first two lines that people like me like you when you're looking at YouTube videos will read first so that's why those two lines have to almost contain the core essential major parts of what your video is within those two lines and that will pull people in as well so you've got all oh, and the keywords the keywords I do within the studio app although you can do it on the website as well and the keywords will just be all the words related to what your video are so for me it'll be keywords like car camper car camping stealth camper stealth camping uk car camping zephira car camping zephira car camper uk car camp <gasps> all of those you can just whack those all in to the keyword function on your video and that will help people find your videos so all of those factors are things that you need to have you need to take into consideration when you're publishing the videos it's not just creating the video editing it and uploading it that's half the job you could say the other half is around all those other features and actually quite a lot of videos I've seen that give you help around YouTube videos actually say you should work out your thumbnail and your title before the video which at first I thought well how does that work that's not always going to work because something may happen so for me in stealth camping something may happen while I car cap that becomes my thumbnail but otherwise it is just the whole thing about clickbait isn't it so it's finding a way to clickbait um, to make people want to click on your link judging by the photo judging by the first by the title and judging by those first two lines of text so these are things worth but i say go on go on to youtube and search up all these it's like all these videos how to get your first thousand subs in a year or how to get your first hundred subs or how to get your first sub it's all those videos will give you the information that I've seen around how you go about improving that side of your channel or how you can try to improve it so I hope you found my little video helpful and useful 
and if you've got any questions then feel free to ask me in the comments and I'll get back to you literally as soon as I see it and as soon as I can but other than that what I'll do now I'll put up the links to my playlists just in case you're interested in seeing what car camping is and other than that I will see you all later take care